I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this BSCI video practice exam where today's topic is even more EIGRP. During your CCNA studies, you learned the basics of EIGRP, and I do have some video practice exams on those basics on YouTube, my website, and other video sharing sites as well. This exam is going to go into a little more detail since it's more for BSCI students working on their CCNP certification. As always, we'll go through 10 questions. We'll go through them fairly quickly since there's a 10 minute time limit on YouTube videos. And if you need to pause the video during the exam, feel free to do so. And answers and explanations will be at the end of the video. Question one, no choices for this one because you learned this in your CCNA studies. What administrative distance is assigned to a route that's learned by EIGRP via route redistribution? should also know what we call that kind of route, but you definitely want to know the AD assigned to it. Moving to question two, after you configure EIGRP route summarization, a summary route is going to appear in the routing table of the router that's actually performing the summarization. Makes sense, right? To what destination or interface will that summary route point? Will it be to a loopback interface, the null zero interface, the interface with the highest EIGRP RID or the exit interface for the summarized route. Let's move to the next question. By default, how many EIGRP hello packets have to be missed in order for an adjacency to be declared dead? We'll move to the next question. By default, what percentage of an interface's available bandwidth can EIGRP use? Next question, how can EIGRP be configured to use equal cost load balancing? Is it on by default? Do you use the variance command? Do you set the metric weights or adjust them? Or use the load balance command? Let's move on to question six. In which of these tables will an EIGRP successor route be found? We'll move to the next one. The EIGRP stub command effectively limits which of the following? And we'll move to the next question. When does an EIGRP speaking router send a full routing table to its neighbor? Is it every 60 seconds, every 30 seconds? Does it depend on the speed of the link? Or is it when the adjacency is first formed? Which of these five EIGRP packet types are considered reliable? All five are important, all five are vital to EIGRP operation, but which ones are considered what we call reliable? Final question, is the letter P next to a route in the EIGRP topology table a good thing? Does it mean passive? Does it mean positive? Is it good? Is it bad? Very important detail here. All right, let's head out to the questions again, and we'll go over the answers. Before we hit those, I want to invite you to come out to the website, especially for the free tutorials. Over 275 of those now. We've got tutorials, videos, practice exams for all the CCNA exams, including the new concentrations and the CCNP exams as well. Uh, free webinars going on almost every week now, at least one a week, on the ccnawebinars.htm page. And we've got CCNP webinars as well security voice and wireless webinars on the way you need no additional equipment you don't even need a headset you don't need any money just 60 minutes of your time and a desire to get certified also visit the blog for daily cisco practice exams questions videos announcements of new webinars and a lot of great new features to also help you get server 2008 certified and that's at the bryantadvantage.blogspot.com so i'll look for you there and in the meantime let's cover the answers to these questions this is an external route, an EIGRP external route. It's going to have an AD of 170. And you'll also see the letters DEX in the routing table indicating that first the D that it's an EIGRP route to begin with and the EX of course that it is external. Interestingly enough the summary route is going to point to the null zero interface and this is a routing loop prevention feature. So again, that's to the null zero interface. When three EIGRP hello packets are missed, that's when an adjacency will be declared dead. 
By default, EIGRP can use half. 50% of an interface's available bandwidth that is configurable, but 50% is the default. EIGRP uses equal cost load balancing by default. And if you said the variance command, remember that that is unequal cost load balancing. You'll actually see the successor route in two of our three EIGRP tables. And you know from your NA studies that the EIGRP tables are topology, route, and neighbor. There is no official EIGRP database table and you'll find the successor route in both the route and topology tables. The EIGRP stub command effectively limits the overall number of dual query packets in your network because EIGRP stub routers are not going to be sent queries since basically the downstream router knows that's a stub and there's no reason to send it a query. An EIGRP speaking router only sends a full routing table at the very beginning of the adjacency when it's first formed. It will send updates after that when there are changes to the network, but it will not send another full routing table. All five of these packet types are important. Hellos and ACKs are considered unreliable, where update, query, and reply packets are considered reliable. The letter P stands for passive and it is a good thing. And it's a little counterintuitive because what we tend to see are either P for passive or A for active. And active sounds good and passive sounds bad, but it's actually quite the opposite. When an EIGRP route is marked as passive, that means that it is not being currently recalculated or calculated for any reason and it can be used to transport data. If you happen to see an A next to it, it stands for active, that means the path is currently being calculated and it can't be used to transport data. Of course, if it stays inactive, we, we call it SIA stuck inactive and that's definitely bad, but that's a video for another time. So that's our EIGRP practice exam for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Again, I invite you to come out to the website. Plenty of free tutorials. We've got a free webinar series going on, free daily practice exam questions on the blog, and other great features on the way. Thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.